The kind of direction that Amina's come from is also really important. It's really critical that people are armed with knowledge um, and have reference points within which to, to create a, a new kind of structure. Okay, can we take the next question at the front? <laughs> um, okay, I, I wanted to say first of all thank you for giving your speeches. Um, I find that a lot of the time we're entangled in Western definitions of equality. And um, when you speak about equality between males and females, where do we draw the line between free mixing, which isn't acceptable when it's done, and professional interaction between the sexes where both the same, female and the male can get their voice heard? Okay, so the question, um, in case anybody didn't hear, is where to draw the line between free mixing, which isn't allowed in Islam, and professional interactions. Which one of you like to ask? Sister Amina will ask the question. Well, thank you for the question, which of course is a uh, one that comes up quite frequently. Uh, which, with regards to the first part, I'm not sure if you intended to connect equity with free mixing. Is that what you were doing? Yeah, because the term the reason why people start doing things, especially in this environment, is because that's what Western ideologies of equality do not. That's true, but one could observe that uh, the ideals for Muslim males and females are the same. Uh, men are not supposed to go out and hang out with a bunch of girls, right? And chat with them and joke with them, and also women are not supposed to do that. Uh, now, the fact that sometimes we're a bit tolerant in our community of the young men doing that, and I don't mean any of you, mashallah, I'm sure you're all in the woman and stuff, uh, that, that's not Islamic, you know, and um, Islamic morality is for both men and women equally, um, regardless of what, whatever people do in the West. I mean, I do want to expand a bit on what you were saying, if you don't mind. Um, it, it is true we shouldn't define ourselves by Western standards whether it's feminist standards or other standards, we, we have our own standards and uh, we don't really need to weigh ourselves by other people's criteria. Uh, but on the other hand, um, there are certain sort of universal values among people and I think we can sometimes see analogies for our experience of certain things that happen in the West. Uh, for example, when Sister Shalina was mentioning the uh, experience that sometimes women have in houses of worship in the sort of shoe closet sort of part of the masjid, so to speak. Um, you know, what really went through my mind was, and of course I'm from the US, uh, but you know, the racial segregation in the US with the blacks being on the back of the bus, the whites in the front. You know, this is sometimes the experience that women will have in our community. And I'm not speaking of standing in the back for Salat, but um, you know, just, just in general, the sort of lack of access or lack of welcome and so forth. And you know, I'm not even, I, I understand, and we all understand, I think, why this happens, but I, I think there is a legitimate parallel that can be made there in some ways, and we shouldn't dispense that parallel just because it's Western, because, you know, so social injustice tends to kind of reappear in the same types worldwide, although I agree completely with your point, we should not be trying to force ourselves into a Western vault in particular, because we have a revelation that we follow. Uh, right, the question... <laughs> The question is um, where to draw the line. Right. Um, well, I do think, first of all, it is important, as Sister Shalina was saying, and to have our voices heard. I have come to think I, think, I think it is a problem in our community that women tend not to understand the experience of our men, our, the ideas, the outlook. And also men have, don't really understand what women are thinking. So we just live our lives just sort of assuming that the other half is happy with how things are, or we have these major assumptions, generalizations, stereotypes. And I honestly think among uh, practicing Muslims, you could correct me on this, but I think a major thing that started to break that down is the internet, because you have all of these people, you know, posting things on Facebook or whatever. And of course, I'm not advocating like how wrong use of Facebook, but I'm just saying you see people, including brothers in our community, writing things, and you go, oh, you know, I had no idea that he ever thought that or she ever thought that. And so, I mean, at least for me, this has really uncovered a lot of perhaps my own stereotyping about uh, the other gender in our community. And I think for a lot of other people, it has still facilitated uh, breaking down some of these barriers. Not necessarily that I'm advocating that we should all be chatting on the internet, but I'm just saying this is a result of what has happened. 
Uh, with regards to the boundaries, of course, I mean, I suppose that's more of a fiqhi question, uh, but obviously there are certain things that are clearly <coughs> prohibited in the religion, you know, such as uh, physical contact or, you know, like I said, you shouldn't just be joking around and socializing because you just think it's really fun to be around girls or guys or whatever. You know, you're not supposed to be um, undignified or immoral in that regard. Um, but I think, uh, you know, there are many ways as a community that we can have a serious discussion without the wrong sorts of intentions, and we, we do it quite often with any other subject. We do it in the sciences, we do it in education, in politics, and so I'm sure, you know, the same way when we're focused on what we're doing and not sort of, you know, other ideas, uh, we can have the same discussions about religious issues, uh, respectfully, inshallah. Would you like to add? It's very complimentary. Can we take the question up the front, please? Yeah. Oh, uh, just, we'll just bring your microphone, sir. Uh, I don't think I need the microphone, but um, I was wondering, um, isn't this kind of a, a contradiction? I mean, I wasn't really aware of the fact I actually wanted to ask that first. I don't see much interaction between the girls and the guys. That was um, just something I noticed. I wanted to ask uh, about that, but as I understand it now, it's not really uh, supposed to be like uh, much interaction between the girls and guys. But isn't that kind of a contradiction um, with what you were saying about um, if you want to stimulate debate and let the women uh, speak so that everybody knows what they're thinking? Uh, that sounds contradictive to me. Thank you. So the question was about how uh, there doesn't seem to be much interaction between um, brothers and sisters and isn't this what we're not trying to advocate for because we're saying how women's voices should be heard so this goes against what you have observed. Is that correct? Yeah. I, think, I think the challenge that we have is to find a model of interaction that exhibits the kind of values that we try and aspire to, so modesty, not just in what we wear, but in the interactions that we have, um, amiability and pleasantry and respect and dignity that we as individuals should show to all other people, whether they're male or female, and, and the other kind of behavioral values. And I think the challenge for us is that at the moment we only have two options, completely all together all the time as though we're in some kind of nightclub, that's one painted option, or completely segregated, almost in two separate buildings. And those appear to be the only two options that are put forward. Now, genuinely, from a human perspective, you just can't live in either of those worlds. And so I don't have a specific answer for the question of, well, how do we you know, create this perfect model of interaction. I think it's, at this stage, it's almost enough to say, these two models are not working, that's how we think we live, but it's not actually how we live. How do we create a new kind of model? So I'm gonna answer your question with a question, but I think, at this stage, it's almost enough to at least be able to put that out there for discussion and say, how do we get away from this, you know, complete separation or, you know, completely living in each other's pockets and find a way that is going to be Islamic for us to interact. We have a question up front. Especially these questions, I want to say, what is the proper amount of interaction?